Posse Vibes, Ken Folk, Chef Benno here, and welcome to a special holiday episode of Midnight Vegan. <laughs> Za! Posse Vibes, Ken Folk, thank you again for tuning in, yo. So for our holiday special dish, we're gonna whip something up really fire, yo. And you know what else? It's all vegan and all organic. So for our main dish, we let some chickpeas or some garbanzo beans soak overnight. We're gonna go ahead and churn and mix those up and bake them and turn them into one big old falafel loaf. And we're gonna drizzle that with some eggplant and tahini dip, yo. That's gonna be fire. To go along with that, we got these big old burrito jumbo shells and we're gonna stuff them. We're gonna stuff them with some butternut squash, some zucchini, some peppers that when we saute them up, some collard greens, some homemade tomato sauce, and our vegan cheese, baby. Oh, it's gonna be like a little pocket lasagna, baby. Oh, I'm so excited, yo. And for dessert, we're gonna go ahead and make our own homemade cranberry sauce, a little bit of orange, apple, star anise. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, and to go along with that, we're gonna do some cornbread with jalapeno and cream corn mini muffins, yo. Hey, can you dig it? All right, baby, let's get to cooking, yo. Ho, ho, ho. Who you calling a ho? First, we're gonna start with our cranberry sauce. We're gonna do that so we can sit it to the side and it can thicken up while we cook everything else, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Quarantine thick, yo. <laughs> za, za. So, what I got here, I got about, you know, six bags of cranberries. So I got a lot of cranberries, because I'm gonna save some of this for later. Um, so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in two separate bowls. And per bowl, I'm gonna put uh, two apples in. We're gonna peel these, we're gonna cut these down. We're gonna do one orange for the zest and the juice. As well as we're gonna need some star anise, about two star anises per bowl, and probably about a pinch of cardamom to go in there as well. A little bit of salt and pepper, and a cup of sugar in each bowl. And yeah, yo, that's all she wrote. Oh, probably add a little bit of pomegranate juice, or you can do some wine if you want to, because what we're gonna do with the star anise and the sugar is make a caramel first, and the wine and the juice is gonna help get all those sticky bits to actually adhere a little bit better. Design, yo, all right, so. Make sure you got your cranberries all nice and washed. And now let's go ahead and put them on the eye. Zaza. Zayo, I bet. So what we're gonna do first is I got my two pots right here. We're gonna put a cup of sugar in each. This is a coconut sugar. So you got a cup in each. And then we're gonna take one of these star anises or anise. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you say it, right? So these are cool, strong, strong, but it's gonna give it a nice potent pop to it. So what we're gonna do. We're gonna put two of those in there. And then we're gonna put a dash of cardamom in there as well. The cardamom, sweet smelling, right? That's gonna be fire. <laughs> and what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this cook all the way down until it gets to a nice gooey caramel. And we'll know, it'll be smelling fire on us, I tell you what. So once that gets down, we'll then add our cranberries in. And I got my eye right now at about medium, medium high. So you can work with what you got at home. Nice, the caramel is like that dark, dark brown color. That's beautiful. Now we can go ahead and add our cranberries in, yo. Zop, 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 zop. Oops, drop one. Man down. Nice, and let those cook down a little bit while we, where'd it go? While we uh, chop up our apples. All right, so we took two diced apples, sliced them up, peeled them, threw them into both of our pots of cranberry, stirred it up real, real good. Now we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper just to bring the dish together. A little bit of pepper to it. Change the game, salt and pepper. Wars have been fought over salt and pepper. We'll stir this up, and the last thing we're gonna do is take some zest of some orange and then squeeze the orange in here as well. Add a little bit of pomegranate juice and then let this cook all the way down. Ooh, it smells good! Let's go ahead and add some zest of orange to each one, and then we'll cut the orange in half and add the orange juice too. All right, posse. There we go, folks. We got our vegan cranberry and orange zest compote. Oof, that's looking good. Let it cook down a little bit more. Add it to our jars and can it up, and maybe add some special oil for the folks who are trying to get really loose. Ha <laughs> ha! Posse 
vibes, yo. So we got our cranberry sauce in the refrigerator all thickening up on us. I canned a few of them too. And for those who are cannabis friendly, I got some special jars just for y'all to slide into my DMs and let me know y'all want it. Posse vibes. Next, let's get to our eggplant and tahini dip. Now, since we're not going to eat gravy because we vegan, the eggplant tahini is kind of going to be our gravy to go on our falafel loaf. So get yourself some eggplants, chop them. We're also going to cut them in half, salt them down, leave them salted down for about 15 to 30 minutes till they start to sweat, all right? Um, throw some olive oil on there. Uh, you don't need any seasonings yet. Actually, we're going to take them, put them in the oven for about 20 minutes at 400 until they get nice and soft. We'll pull them out, scoop the meat out into our blender, and then we'll add our seasonings, some onions, a little bit of garlic, some herbs, definitely some tahini, and that's going to be our sauce. We got our eggplant right here, all baked up. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut the meat out. So this is just the meat section of the eggplant. Deliciousness right here. It's like if you had some lobster, bruh, you just pull that out fresh, vibes. So we're gonna do that with all of our eggplants and throw it in our blender. And then we're gonna be adding a little bit of sriracha, mm -hmm. a little bit of the Zatar uh, Mediterranean seasoning, which is basically some sesame seeds, some olive oil, some herbs, it's just delicious. And lastly, the tahini. The tahini is gonna make it really, really delicious. It's gonna give you the protein you need as these us vegans out here. And we'll blend all that up and put it to the side, and that will be our gravy to go on our falafel. Loaf. Live Joe, so before I forget, when it comes to our tahini eggplant dip, what we're also gonna do, we're gonna add in about half of a red onion. Um, and for seasonings, we're gonna do some rosemary, some thyme, also some ginger, and of course, salt and pepper. Now, when it comes to the sriracha and the zatar, it's really just a squirt of this to help with the color and give it a little bit of, uh, of hot flavor to it. The zatar, about a spoonful of this, and then about two to three spoonfuls of tahini till we get the right consistency we're going for. So, yo, all right, let's season this thing up. Vibes. Boom, boom. Man, creamy deliciousness. All right, let's throw this to the side. And what are we gonna do next? Next, let's bake up our butternut squash. Vibes, yo. So up next, we got our classic butternut squash. I've already halved it, hold out all the seeds. So what I'm gonna do now is kind of uh, throw a couple of seasonings and some oil on it to give it a nice sweet taste. So we got a pumpkin spice, some cinnamon, um, some apple cider vinegar, a little bit of our monk fruit syrup, and of course the classic salt and pepper. So we're gonna go ahead and lather this down with some grapeseed oil um, or some olive oil, whichever you have. Throw our seasonings on um, about anywhere from a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, depending. Definitely a uh, half a teaspoon for the apple cider vinegar on each half. We don't want it to be too strong. And about a teaspoon of the syrup that we're gonna put on there. After we got that all decked out and looking good, into the oven it goes at 475 for 45 minutes. Then, yo, into the oven they go. Now another great recipe for this is to go ahead and stuff this up with some rice, some quinoa, some cranberries, what have you, to make a stuffed kind of butternut squash, which is also super fun. Za, into the oven, let's do it. go ahead and get our chickpeas ready. So we've soaked these overnight so they've swollen up with water, rinsed them off real, real good. Now what we're gonna do is add them to our blender with about half an onion, three cloves of garlic, and some seasoning. The seasonings we're gonna use are some cardamom, some cumin, and now traditionally you'd use fresh herbs like cilantro or parsley. But we couldn't come across any this time, so we got some dried parsley and some dried cilantro. We're gonna add in about two avocados into there to get it nice and moist, churn it all up, and then at that point we'll pull it out, put it into a bowl, add about a cup of chickpea flour, mix it up, and let it sit in the fridge for about 30 to an hour so we can just solidify for it so we can shape our loaf. All right, let's get to blending. All right, folks, we got everything in our blender. We got our chickpeas, onions, garlic. We got cumin, cilantro, parsley, salt, pepper, nutritional yeast, and some onions. Uh, now I added a little bit of smoked paprika just to give it a little kick, and a well some olive oil to make sure it's moist in there. All right, let's blend it all up. Yeah. All right, now that we got all of our chickpeas mixed up with the herbs and seasonings, now we're gonna add about six tablespoons of chickpea flour, ba-boom, into here. 
mush it all up in about a teaspoon of baking soda. And we'll let this sit in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Let it solidify some, and then we'll go ahead and make it into our loaf and bake it up. Virus kid, folks. So up next, what we're gonna do? We got some organic zucchini right here and some bell peppers. We're gonna chop them up, do a quick little pulse chop in our blender, and then throw them in the pan, saute them for a quick minute, add some liquid smoke, a few more seasonings and herbs, and then put that to the side. This is gonna be one of our fillings for our jumbo shell pasta. Zai yo, so let's get to chopping. Bada bing, bada boom. Now let's go ahead, throw this in our pan with a little bit of grapeseed oil, and saute it up. Za. Let's add some seasonings to our zucchini mix, yo. So a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper to put in there. Mm-hmm. Definitely gotta put the liquid smoke in there, yo. Give it that meat flavoring. That's gonna be fire. I'm also gonna put in a little bit of smoked paprika. Get you some. Get you some. Throw that in there. Oh yeah, what else we got here? Oh, this little paleo herb uh, blend. That's fire too. Mainly just got uh, garlic powder, uh, black pepper, onion powder, basil, oregano, lemon peel, celery thyme. Some good stuff. Just some good stuff to flavor it up. Bink, bink, bink. Oh man, fire, pink. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? So we'll stir this up. Cook it down some. Yes, and they'll put this to the side. Vibes, yo. You only got a few more dishes left. Shoot, we got the eggplant tahini all churned up and looking and tasting delicious. We got the zucchini shredded. We got the butternut squash baked. So now let's go ahead and make our falafel loaf. So we got our falafel mix here. We left it in the refrigerator for about an hour or so. We're gonna scoop out a good portion of it. Go ahead and put some olive oil in our pan. Spray it down so it's nice and covered. Then throw this all in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Um, at 425, we'll see how it's doing then. Um, at that point, once it gets nice and brown, and firm, we'll know we're all said and done, yo. All right, yeah, let's get to making our loaf. Ozzy T vibes. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Now what you want to do is make sure it's nice and impacting in there because typically what we would do with the falafels is obviously make little balls with them, right? So we'll, we'll have them squished together all nice and tight. So make sure you impact it well so it's stuck in there tight. And then throw it in your oven. Let's see how it goes. You know, I have so much falafel mix left over. Um, I'm just gonna make some falafel balls to go along with it. And what I can do is, after I roll them up and bake them with the loaf, I can take them and put them in a Ziploc bag and throw them away from the freezer for another day. You know, some other good tidings where I can just share them with some of these folks out here. So, uh, let's go ahead and roll up some balls too. Sorry. All right, got the falafels rolled out with the loaf. Make sure you spray some olive oil on top of it real quick before you put it in the oven. Vibes, Kim folk. Now that we got our falafels in the oven, let's go ahead and make our tomato sauce. So we got some organic cherry tomatoes, about three packs of those. We got about eight or nine cloves of garlic and a quarter of a white onion. What we're gonna do in our pan is throw in some olive oil, throw in our onion and our garlic, let that caramelize, and then throw in our tomatoes. Now what you can do with this recipe is add some carrots to thicken it up and sweeten it up but we're gonna forgo that for this time. But uh, all right, let's chop these onions and this garlic up and throw it in our pan. Vibe, so we got our pan with a little bit of olive oil in there. Let's go ahead and add this garlic and these onions. And when they start to caramelize and brown up, we'll then add in our tomatoes. Now you can also add in some green peppers and stuff, but since we're gonna have that already in our zucchini and in our falafels, I don't think we need to do it this time. Put all that in there and let it caramelize. All right, our onions and our garlic have caramelized. Added a little bit of salt and pepper. Now we're going to throw in our tomatoes. Add in a little bit more olive oil. Put the top on it. Let this cook down for about 15 20 minutes. Look 
Now, let's see. Let's go ahead and make our cheese sauce to go along with the jumbo shells. All right, to make our vegan cheese sauce, what we're gonna do first, we're gonna take five tablespoons of this uh, vegan butter. So I'll put five in there. And then we'll put in a quarter cup of gluten-free flour. In our back pan over here, we're gonna pour up four cups of rice milk, add about a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, um, some minced garlic, and some salt and some pepper. And then we'll let them boil up together and then combine them. Huzzah. Would you look at that? Delicious looking falafel loaf. Got the falafels. Ooh, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. <laughs> Those looking good. Man, that turned out amazing. Five, Joe. One more down, a couple more to go. Look at that tomato sauce, looks good. Now we're gonna add in a little bit of fresh basil on top of that, and that's all done. Excuse me, I got a little falafel in my teeth. Dipped in the eggplant tahini. Yo, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry, sorry, but yo, that, that's fire though, yo. All right, so um, our main dish, right, we got here is these Berea Jumbo shells. Unfortunately, I couldn't find them gluten-free, so these are made with wheat durum flour, so you know, you gotta keep that in mind. But they're pretty big, yo, pretty big shells. I mean, we're gonna stuff them with everything we've made tonight. Some butternut squash, some zucchini. I got some old collard greens I canned up. I'm gonna put that in there, um, along with the tomato sauce and the cheese. So what we're gonna do with these first, we're gonna boil them um, in a pot of water for about nine minutes, let them sit out and cool, and then we're gonna put them into our Pyrex dish, stuff them with our ingredients, drizzle the sauce and the cheese on top, throw them in the oven for about 30 minutes at 400 degrees. And while those are cooking, then we'll get working on our cornbread mini muffins. Zai, y'all, you, can you taste it? Ah, I can, ah, we're so close, it's about to be so fire. Zai, y'all, let's do it. All right, so we got our big old jumbo shell noodles in here. We're gonna let them boil, like I said, for nine minutes, top off, and then we'll drain them, let them cool, and then start to stuff. All right, folks, we got our noodles all cooked up. What I'm gonna do now is add all our ingredients. I'm gonna start with some butternut squash, then put some zucchini in there, a little bit of these canned collard greens I had, then hit it with the sauce and the cheese, and then put it in our Pyrex dish. So we'll do it one at a time. All stuffed and ready to go. Now we'll cover them with some foil and then throw them in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. Zaza. Vibes, yo. We here at the very end. We're about to make our cornbread mini muffins. Now I got this Bob's Red Mill cornbread mix, so it already has baking soda and baking powder in it, so we don't have to add more to that. But we'll add a bag of this. Um, we'll add probably about five scoops of our vegan butter, uh, a can of cream corn, one fairly large jalapeno. We'll see, we don't wanna make it too hot. Um, a pack of applesauce to keep it moist. And instead of regular milk and eggs, we're gonna be using some rice and coconut milk um, and a little bit of coconut oil. All right, so we're gonna put all that into our bowl, mix it up, and then pour it into our wonderful little mini pan that we got right here and bake it up. All right, za. All right, we got our Bob's Red Mill mix in our bowl. Now we're gonna add a cup and a half of coconut milk and then we're gonna put in our cream corn, five scoops, five tablespoons of vegan butter and a tablespoon of coconut oil. All right, we got our cream corn in there, we got our butter in there, we got a couple of diced jalapenos in there. This is ready to go. So now we're gonna pour it up into our tray and then put it in the oven for about 30 minutes at 375. All laid out. Now let's throw them in the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes. Huzzah. Here it is, folks, all laid out. We have our falafel drizzle with our tahini and eggplant gravy. We got our jumbo shell stuffed with butternut squash, collard greens, shredded zucchini and peppers, our homemade tomato sauce, and bachamon cheese sauce. And then in the middle, we got our mini cornbread muffins made with jalapeno and on top, just a nice little splashing of our homemade cranberry sauce. Zaza, yo.
Hey, happy holidays. Let's dig in. Hey, za za za, yo, we did it, kid, folks. Uh, this looks amazing, yo. Hey, I hope y'all had a wonderful holiday weekend. That you're staying safe and staying positive, and just realize every day is a holiday when you got good food and good people to share it with. So thank you for tuning in and blessing me with your presence, yo. Za za, hey, yo. I can't wait to dig in, yo, forever. What we gonna start with? Uh, the cornbread, of course, yo. Let me see how we did it with this jam and, and the muffin. Let me see. Oh! Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, my, yes! All right, that makes me want to put on Jingle All The Way and Friday After Next, then this Christmas, man. That's a holiday special. Hey, look, sorry, but... I won't be delivering these meals to people this week, but I will be releasing some jams, both cranberry and apple, and some special mini biscuits for the holidays. So stay tuned on ZoeArtHouse.com or The Midnight Vegan or right here on Zoe Ham's IG, baby. A hey, positive vibe. Let me go ahead and finish this thing. Let me see what this noodle is talking about. Man, that looks so good. Mm. Oh! Oh! When the sauce hits your lips, though, yo, that is so fire. That is so fire. And then, of course, let's try out the falafel, B. Let's see. Yep. <laughs> Eggplant come through. Come through. All right. We did that. I saw all y'all throwing down in the kitchen, so I was just a fan this whole weekend. So I had to do a little stunting myself, yo. So big ups to everybody out there, out here grooving, doing their thing, going the hardest out here. And realize, you know what I'm saying, we still fighting, we still rising, we still got the names of the people that have been stolen from us in our mouths and in our hearts. So remember them, Breonna Taylor, Elijah McClain, and just the innumerable number of people we don't know because we've been hidden from us. Recognize that it's a blessing to be here right now. And I'm blessed to have you with me. Posy vibes, kinfolk. Always rise. <laughs> Chef Dinner. Zah.